Hey there, my friends. How's it going today? I'm going to talk about tobacco, and since tobacco is a controlled substance for at least people under 18, I thought I should put a disclaimer first. This video is not intended to promote or diagnose or cure any illness. It's not intended to promote or um, cause anyone to want to try tobacco or smoke. I was a smoker for 25 years, and it's the most disgusting habit I've ever had. It was very difficult to break, and since then, for the past three years or so, I've been vaping. Um, eventually, I would like to quit vaping, but uh, I kind of enjoy it. I've done a lot of thinking about nicotine itself and why the experience of vaping is so much different than the experience of smoking. And what I mean by that is, yes, smoking nicotine or nicotine salts, any form of nicotine that is put in these vapes uh, and juice is uh, very similar to any nicotine you would get out of tobacco. And a person can get a nicotine buzz off of a vape just like tobacco. Uh, the big question that I've had as a smoker and a vapor for as long as I have been is, why are they so different? <laughs> so, if, you, if you've never been one or the other, or I should say if you've never been both, you might not know what I'm talking about. So I'd like to kind of define where I'm coming from and talk about some interesting constituents that are within tobacco that a lot of people aren't aware of. Now, <clears throat> This is part of my tobacco series. I grow tobacco for my own ritual use and enjoyment, and most of it just gets more or less tossed. It's experimental, and I'm learning a process which uh, thousands of years in the making for many of these tribes and cultures. Uh, the standard tobacco that you would grow for Virginia tobacco, let's say, for cigarettes, is different than, say, Turkish tobacco, which is why they will say, you know, different types. If it's Turkish, it's a little bit darker. It has more body. It's sun-dried quite often. Uh, but that's for another story. This one's specifically about nicotine and the other compounds that are in tobacco that give it a different feeling, a different buzz. And it's not a positive buzz. I'm not sitting here talking about how to get the best buzz. I'm saying that <clears throat> I actually didn't like the feeling I got when I would smoke cigarettes in the morning. It would be a head rush. It would make me kind of dizzy and off-center and off-balance. I've never had that with vaping before. Um, now, standard tobacco is one thing. As I said, the stuff I'm drying behind me here, uh, this is Nicotiana rustica, which is otherwise known as Aztec tobacco or Mohawk tobacco. And it has up to nine times more nicotine than your standard tobacco. So it's ceremonial. It's the same type of leaf that they use to make mapacho, which is what everybody smokes down there in, uh, you know, some of the Southern American countries. They smoke these kind of cigars or mapacho, which is just really strong tobacco. And there are different methods of preparing it by uh, some people put it, honey on it and then bake it over a fire. There are dozens of recipes for one same thing. Uh, but some people consume snuffs and a variety of other different uh, compounds or different forms of tobacco. And it has gained a very strong stigma in the West, naturally, because we were introduced, you know, Europeans were introduced to tobacco, fell in love with it, and uh, it was passed on as now this the most disgusting habit you could possibly have. Fortunately, in the United States, uh, smoking has been on the decline. When I was a kid, people smoked everywhere. Everywhere. Airports, hell, airplanes. Uh, I had a smoking lounge at my high school where we could smoke. And even the younger kids could kind of sneak in there and smoke. So, <clears throat> times have changed quickly. People have become educated. And it wasn't that we didn't know. It's that the tobacco companies lied their asses off. And now all the papers are out to prove that they were trying to pull the wool over everyone's eyes. And there's a huge tobacco settlement, like, uh, I believe it's like a three or four hundred billion dollar settlement where they're paying out over a period of 25 years. Of course, all those funds are being wasted by the local governments, and they're supposed to go to non-smoking programs. But I digress. All that aside, tobacco itself is um, on the decline, tobacco use in America. Does that mean that tobacco companies have lost money? No. They long ago went to Indonesia and other places. There are places where there are cigarette, little cigarette huts or stand-up 
just like it would be a vendor for a hot dogs or anything else, selling single cigarettes outside of the grade schools in some of these places. And kids as young as, you know, 8, 9, 10 are smoking regularly all the time. So, <coughs> <coughs> sorry. That's what I'm saying. Smoking has a stigma. And I urge young people not to smoke. So, back to the ceremonial aspect of it. There are a few aspects of this that I really wanted to share. And so I took a couple notes on here because when we talk about tobacco, we talk... And the question I wanted to bring up when I first started this was, uh, why does tobacco help people relax? And people think, well, it's because you're a smoker, and naturally consuming more nicotine is going to help you relax. But that's not the case, at least not in full. Tobacco contains beta-carbolines. Now, your average tobacco might contain a smaller amount, but this tobacco contains a lot compared to, you know, your standard tobacco. Um, I'm not sure the exact amount of how much more, but beta-carbolines are otherwise known as, uh, well, they're MALYs, monoamine oxidase inhibitors. And they are, yes, the same compound that is taken with like harmine or harmaline or harmala or uh, a whole bunch of other compounds that act as, uh, they suppress your monoamine oxidase, which or your monoamine, hey, let's just put it this way, you oxidize monoamine, I, I, I won't even, <laughs> I was trying to figure out how to describe this, but uh, uh, anyway, put it this way, your stomach breaks down certain things, and when you take uh, an MAOI, it stops the enzyme from breaking those drugs down. So if a person orally consumes DMT, nothing will happen. If they orally consume DMT with an MAOI, well, this changes because uh, it actually can be absorbed and they can get effect. And that's, in fact, what ayahuasca is. It's a MAOI plant combined with uh, a DMT-containing plant. So you'll have, like, Banisteropsis capi as one of them. Uh, so anyhow, I'm getting way off track. Mohawk tobacco is really easy to cultivate. I mean, it grows pretty much anywhere. It's very hardy. It has very thick, rubbery leaves and uh, they're extremely strong. The stuff that I have grown and dried has been very strong, but the aspect about beta-carbolines is that they help reduce anxiety, uh, and I guess I could make this video forever, me just talking about it. I should read the parts I wanted to read at least here. I brought my phone. Okay, this is just some random pages that I was going through on some psychedelic sites and other sites. Uh, depressive disorders remain a current public health problem, whose prevalence has increased in the past decades. In the constant search for new therapeutic alternatives, beta-carboline alkaloids have been identified as a good candidate for new antidepressant drugs. In this systematic review, we will summarize all blah, 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 blah. Okay, I just wanted to read that part. And then it also says, um, some models, it has been proposed for their, okay. In general, beta-carbolines modulate 5-HT which is the 5-HT receptors are the same one used in psychedelics. Uh, they modulate 5-HT2A, to be specific, for LSD. Uh, Beta-carbolines modulate the 5-HT and GABA systems, promoting neurogenesis, and that's, yes, getting smarter, growing your brain. So, yes, tobacco might make you smarter. There have been a lot of debates on nicotine and whether or not it's actually uh, a nootropic in itself but perhaps tobacco has some other compounds we're just not aware of, uh, but we're learning. Okay, sorry. Beta-carbolines modulate 5-HT and GABA systems, promote neurogenesis, induce neuroendocrine response, and restore astrocytic function, being effective when administered acutely or chronically in different animal models, including mild stress protocols. In short, beta-carbolines are multi-target antidepressant compounds and may be useful in the treatment of depressive disorders. Fascinating. Just fascinating when you really think about how many people smoke, and even if cigarette tobacco has a smaller amount. Um, but more fascinating to me is the fact that if they're truly an MAOI, uh, why wouldn't they be added to DMT compounds? And I found out they indeed are. In some tribes, they add these uh, you know, traditional hardcore tobacco leaves uh, to their mixture of ayahuasca, but you don't want to add too much. 
because if you add too much, then you're obviously getting a lot of nicotine too, and that can make people sick. And only the shamans traditionally could handle that amount of nicotine. Uh, but obviously it wasn't just nicotine is the point. Um, so this one's a little bit more uh, along the lines of... Kitty. Hi, kitty. Hi, kitty. A little bit along the lines of spirit, the spirituality. This is a different side from a psych psychedelic thing with a guy who went to visit a shaman, a medicine woman. It says, the unique thing about tobacco, the medicine woman explained, as she passed around a jar of tobacco ground and diluted in water, is that compared to other plant medicines, tobacco both grounds and stimulates you. This contradictory combination of grounding and uplifting properties is what makes it such a potent medicine, she explained. It clears away superfluous energies and is powerful aid for setting intentions, which is how the indigenous tribes of the Americas have used it for more than 3,000 years, which makes sense. Um, you know, setting intentions is something that psychedelics can promote as well. And before I forget, I would like to say that, you know, um, there are some negative sides to this that I wanted to mention before I forget. The obvious factor that being that for smokers who smoke regularly, it's interesting to think if you're consuming an MAOI all the time and you smoke all day long and it's a strong tobacco, what could that be doing to our intake of other foods? Because MAOIs can be dangerous because they allow our stop our stomach from breaking down other dangerous compounds. So that's another thought I wanted to make about how smoking tobacco may be much more harmful than, let's say, vaping. But um, that's only if you're using it daily and you're a smoker, let's say. And I've been there. So, uh, yeah, it says... Um, yeah, this is how, yeah, which is how the indigenous tribes of the Americas have used it for more than 3,000 years. Uh, the tobacco used at my sweat lodge ceremony was not the same as what you'd find in a pack of cigarettes from the corner store. This was Nicotiana rustica, what's called mapacho in, southern, in northern Amazon, and the main ingredient in the tobacco snuff known as hape, which is written like R-A-P-A, -A, like rape with like a little thing over the E. It's called hape. Um... It's found in the southern Amazon. Um, this particular, particularly potent variety of tobacco contains up to 20 times the amount of nicotine found in the variety of tobacco used for cigarettes, Nicotania tobaccum. But is there any scientific backing to the claims that tobacco aids in setting intentions and clearing negative energies? Undoubtedly, most research on tobacco focuses on its widespread abuse around the globe the link between smoking and cancer and pulmonary diseases, and the threat of addiction. Um, this hardly seems to be making a spiritual, the making of a spiritual tool, but the shamans who use tobacco for ceremonial purposes explain that, while any powerful plant medicine has the potential for abuse, tobacco, if grown and harvested responsibly without the use of pesticides, can have great benefits when used in a controlled ritual setting. A look into the research shows a complex relationship between tobacco and health. So on to the part. This particularly potent variety of tobacco called Nicotiana rustica contains high amounts of beta carbolines, including the harmala alkaloids harmane and norharmane. These alkaloids are also found in the Amazon, Amazonian vine Banisteropsis capi, one of the principal ingredients in ayahuasca. They are MAO inhibitors that stimulate the body's central nervous system by inhibiting hormones like serotonin and norepinephrine. The presence of these harmala alkaloids supports evidence that tobacco has antidepressant properties similar to those of ayahuasca and other psychedelics. These biochemical qualities would help explain the grounding feeling experienced by many people. Interestingly, the harmala alkaloids have been dubbed by studies as having neuroprotective, yes, protects your brain, anti-cancer properties, contradictory to many studies done on tobacco smoking. Of course, if you say that tobacco might have anti-cancer properties, you're, you know, it's ridiculous, but think about this. If you say that cannabis or CBD cannabis might have anti-cancer properties, people are starting to believe it. But if you said if you sit around and smoke two ounces of cannabis every day, really harsh, horribly grown weed, that's a different story. Even if it has CBD, you're doing more damage than good, so it's about using common sense. 
Ritual doesn't mean even you smoke it every day. And like psychedelics, they need to, it needs to be treated with respect as a plant. Um, so anyway, uh, it says, while there is no cut and dry explanation for these contradictory results, some say the negative effects of tobacco lie in its other ingredients, while others blamed industrialized ag agriculture of tobacco and widespread use of pesticides and chemicals in the manufacture of cigarettes. So, we're going to go on to the beta carbolines. What exactly are they? My kitty's down here just dying for attention. Beta carbolines are a class of indole alkaloids, which are structurally similar and biosynthetically derived from the amino acid L-tryptophan. Remember that. It's always an important one. This always has to do with GABA uh, and 5-HT. It's it, all these different receptors which have these stupid names that, you know, it's hard to define without having the premise of which receptors are being affected, but there's a lot more than that. Um, so it says... Tryptophan derivatives are very important in the central nervous system function and include the neurotransmitter serotonin, the pineal metabolite melatonin, the potent hallucinogen dimethyltryptamine, DMT, and the monoamine oxidase inhibitors, MAOI, the beta carbolines, which is another interesting concept since even if you don't consume DMT, your body produces endogenous DMT. So would beta carbolines uh, lengthen or intensify an experience, an endogenous experience. <laughs> Funny cat. So it says, uh, I'm almost done here. A clue to, as to the beta carbolines mode of action can be seen in examining their relationship to serotonin. It seems that ingestion of beta carbolines raises serotonin levels, and this increase is a result of the inhibited action of MAO Normally, MAO degrades the neurotransmitter serotonin, dopamine, and epinephrine. Therefore, inhibition of this enzyme seriously affects brain chemistry. And here's the dangerous part. When on MAOIs, ingestion of aged cheese, beer, wine, pickled herring, chicken, liver, yeast, large amounts of coffee, citrus fruits, canned figs, broad beans, chocolate, or cream, while MAO is inhibited, can cause a hypertensive crisis, including a dangerous rise in blood pressure, effects of am amphetamines, general anesthetics, sedatives, antihistamines, alcohol, potent analgesics, and anticholinergic and antidepressant agents are prolonged and intensified. Overdosage of MAOIs by themselves is also possible with the effects including hyperflexia and convulsions. And um, another result of ingesting beta carbolines or other MAOIs at high doses is the occurrence of vivid visual hallucinations. It's not understood whether this hallucinatory effect is related directly to the inhibition of MAO, but due to the structural similarity to serotonin, it is possible that beta carbolines are acting as serotonin antagonists in much the same way LSD does. Sorry for the long-winded rant there, but let me go back and step back here for a minute. Let's talk about someone who is sitting in a room at Alcoholics Anonymous, a chain smoker who finally quit smoking, and they're sitting there drinking coffee and smoking cigarettes. Coffee and cigarettes, such a common combination, all my life. It would make me a little hypertensive, and I've noticed that that went away since, I mean, it's really interesting to think was it the MAOs, MAOIs in the tobacco that I was smoking when I was a smoker that may have somewhat affected the foods that I was eating, causing me the stress? Because I was stressed until my 30s, and I, I did manage to kind of, you know, lower my stress, but um, it's hard to know. I mean, I started Kratom like 10 years ago, and I also, you know, quit smoking three years ago, and I've been vaping still. It's really hard to get a, a good gauge on what our bodies are doing, and we're getting older at the same time. But when, when we think, well, I don't know, cigarettes are the most dangerous thing. And I guess the point here is that if these MAOIs could be a huge benefit to people who are using this ritually, and a huge detriment to regular smokers everywhere. So if you don't have a reason to quit already, it's not the addiction to nicotine that's the problem. 
When people say nicotine is a killer, it's not. And in fact, nicotine has found been found to have neuroprotective uh, uh, benefits, which uh, I think I had another page. Nope, that's it. <clears throat> um, oh, there was one more page. I was it was off of like a, the DMT nexus or something. I'm sure smoking. Okay, I was reading the other day about how nicotine. Okay. Here's somebody who found this. They were reading an article. I was reading the other day about how nicotine didn't cause rats to self-administer it. Oh, they were talking about... Um, uh, okay. I was reading... Oh, okay. Self-administer tobacco. I was reading the other day about how nicotine didn't cause rats to self-administer it, but in tobacco, with the MAOIs, it did. This would mean the nicotine isn't addictive unless mixed with the MAOIs. This is a fascinating idea. Nicotine itself has always been thought to be the culprit of addiction, and it's always to blame. Uh, and it probably is a major component, because it's not just cigarettes. People chew tobacco as well, and there is a buzz involved. But these other components are also absorbed through snuff and chew. And so there's a lot more research to be done in this realm. I'm sure the cigarette companies have it all figured out, but they're not going to tell anybody else. Um, I think that most of the cigarettes on the market today, not only are they loaded with pesticides, but you know they're probably soaked in ammonia and sprayed down with various chemicals for processing and additives, and they've been known to add back nicotine back into it. They're all proprietary blends. It's all secret. And I really urge anybody out there who's a smoker to quit. Even though this entire video is about tobacco, and it seems kind of counterintuitive to even make a video about tobacco, it's just because I respect it so much for what it is. And this stuff is no joke. You don't smoke this stuff on a daily basis. So uh, maybe I'll just show you my garden before I go so you can see where I got. So these here are the leaves. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Here's the kitty. Hey, you want to be part of the excitement? What's up, girl? Hey. So these are the ones I just picked today. And these are the ones I picked a few days ago, but I decided to bring them outside. I am going with a sun drying method. Sun drying actually does change the alkaloid profile, the flavor, everything about it, but that's because I'm going traditional on these and I'm going to make them Turkish style. So <clears throat> these are all my tobacco plants and the beautiful thing is in the evening they close their leaves up. Because I made a video earlier about them, I might upload that before this one. and. Uh, What's up, girl? What's up, girl? They have nice big leaves. And I also grow a variety of Cuban tobacco. And it looks more like this. And if I'm not mistaken, I honestly think this is Cuban tobacco right here. Let me tell you, every one of these seeds came up by chance uh, this year. These are probably from three or four years ago. Each year, a whole bunch of tobacco plants come up. And it's because they produce thousands of seeds. But uh, the interesting thing is that the, the Havana tobacco was so much harder to grow, I was never, never able to get it to come up right. But every once in a while, I'll see a little plant like this pop up. And I want to tell you, oh man, even that one even got broken off, it looks like. But oh, it must have been something. But anyway, it has a completely different leaf profile as you can see so there's the big fat leaves and here's the thin one so that's going to be my special cigar tobacco I just find it to be a fascinating plant and I thought I'd share so thanks for coming along I hope you learned something about beta carbolines and uh, I sure did talk to you soon be well